Welcome to I Finally Get It. This week we visit with Zachary Dubois, owner of Cajun Lures and Lanyap Productions. In the studio with us as always, Dustin Webb, our producer. I'm your host, Jeff Martin. Let's get it. My aha moments that I had to discover over time or through time wasn't really something that I kind of just picked up or learned through anything I did. Um, there was always just some kind of missing puzzle piece to anything I, I did or maybe I was searching for, or, you know, to be truthful about what my aha moment was, was basically me giving my life and everything to, to, to Jesus and kind of basically surrendering my life, but not only that, but my business and everything I do. Yeah to him and the and for the glory of God, you know, and um and from that is kind of where everything started to you know, just, you know, reading the Bible, studying all these things and that kind of the, the the I guess the many lessons I would learn through scripture and and uh and and all of that I I could apply it to my business, you know. Yeah, yeah. And everything that I would do. And so that was really, you know, the foundation. I felt like and I say it's an aha moment. It's not that it was something I was doing or wasn't doing beforehand. It was just something that happened. And it seemed like ever since that happened, my foundation was harder, concrete, Correct. that I could build on. And just things started to make sense, you know. Decisions became easier for me when in the past they might have been tougher to make within business. And, you know, if I struggled with something like a decision or should I do this? Should I not do that? Long term, short term, what have you. It's just like, it was easier. Yeah. You know, yeah. it made more sense. I would say that's my big overall aha I, I, moment. I love it because I, I've shared before that one of my biggest struggles is thinking that I can control everything and, and giving it up to him, mm -hmm. allowing him to be my uh, senior partner in my company yeah, and my coworker, right? I love that you're saying that, and it is a big deal, and it's a life-changing moment, so good for you. You know, with the past few years with Cajun Lures, you know, um, economy-wise and how things kind of just came to maybe where the point I'm at now. Uh, well, let, let's back up. Okay. Let's back up. So when I first met you, you were... 100% Cajun lures, right? Mm -hmm. So let's talk about what Cajun lures is. Basically, it's fishing lure company. Mm -hmm. I started in 2015, I believe. Yeah. I started it. Um, I I had gone to school for industrial design at UL. And while I was there, I was also on the fishing team, bass fishing team, tournament fishing team at UL. And so while I was also going to school and fishing, I kind of was able to learn how to manufacture and, and learn manufacturing techniques and design and the design process and all of that in school and then kind of combine it with my passion, which is fishing, but not just fishing, but chasing down fish, learning how to catch them and try to catch them efficiently because you're fishing in a tournament. Just really kind of combine those two hobbies, uh, or how, say a hobby, uh, passion, uh, really. education yeah. and a passion, you know, yeah. and yeah. And started doing that on the side, graduated college, got a job and everything, designing boats actually, and then was doing the lures on the side. And then at some point it just kind of, kind of got bigger and bigger and progressed and, uh, kind of started taking it. I started, decided to do it full time, you know, and I was kind of a big dive into it, a little yeah. nervous about it, but at the time it really like paid off and it was just kind of me making the lures and just kind of calling and hustling and, you know, what have you to you know, to, to get the product out there. Cause you know, I was confident in the product I was making. It was just a matter of getting enough people to fish with them and try. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You know? Well, it was, it, it's a great brand. You have great lures. You, you had a bunch of different molds, right? Mm -hmm. You have a bunch of different molds. And I know that you were in a bunch of different retail centers, but at some point you, um, I guess with the economy declining, it mm -hmm. started to reduce the number of people buying the, the lures, huh? Yeah, it, it definitely seemed that way, which is kind of funny because my biggest theory is definitely it's economy base, um, which in 2020 was like a record year for the whole fishing tackle industry of it was literally record sales in 2020. You would go to even the big box stores, Academy or something, 
and their shelves were literally wiped out. I, re- I remember that actually. There was nothing. There, yeah. there was like no packs of bait on the shelf because so many people were getting into fishing, you know, because that's all they could really do <laughs> recreational at the time with COVID. So it was a record year in 2020. It kind of seems like after 2020, it just, there was like a slow trickle downhill, you know, and I could see the trends, you know, I always kept measurements of, uh, you know, I knew my seasons, you know, if yeah, I look yeah, back sure, in my sure. quick buckets and stuff, I could see the, the graph and, you know, my highs and lows. I keep that in mind. Like, I don't, I'm not going to start off in January and it's going to go straight up <laughs> into yeah, December. Yeah. It's not, yeah. it doesn't look like that. So I'm always mindful of that. But, um, you know, each year after year after that, I would see, you know, okay, I'm down 20%, down this percent. And I'm just like, hmm, <laughs> something's odd. Is it a lack of marketing? Am I not yeah, doing yeah. this? Am I not doing that? And it's always questioning myself on like, am I not doing something? Or is it an external factor? You know, what is going on? So we're at the point where you, you have a passion project, you're great at it, but the market has kind of changed. Mm-hmm. So, and then you have to figure out, all right, what am I going to do to bring income into the house? Yeah. Because you're not like this employee type person. You are an entrepreneur yeah. and, and you want to keep it. So how hard was it to make a decision to just go do something? We'll talk about what you did, mm-hmm. but how hard was it to say, I got to go find something else? It's more of it was always like a time dedication thing, I guess, for me, because I already knew my workload and what I did have to dedicate to Cajun Lures. And I guess it, this was, was something also in my business that helped me think of it is like I was always my own worst enemy, I guess, <laughs> in the fact that if I did get pulled somewhere else or was too busy doing something else or had or had to do something else that, well, if lures aren't being made or things aren't posting on social media, marketing's being done. If any of these other things that the business needed to continue wasn't being done because I personally had to be somewhere else or what have you, or spend time with my kids, spend That's time right. with my wife, right. then it was being affected. So yeah. I re- it was really the realization that I, you know, it falls on me, but I'm my own worst enemy to the business because I didn't have any resources or anything in place where – I could be doing something else, but lures are still being made or things are still yeah, being handled yeah, in the you, background. You had a business. It just wasn't a company. You yeah. never reached the company level right. where you can kind of step out. Yeah, exactly. And so when you, uh, when you were out, yeah, it stopped. <laughs> and, <laughs> and it was, it was hard how it came about into what I'm kind of doing more now with it. I feel like I could, I wouldn't have made that decision on my own for sure. And that's why I say the, the whole thing just kind of giving the company everything to to God and I look at it now like I'm just a I'm just a a laborer you know but God's gonna provide everything else literally when it when I would kind of see the I guess you call I don't know what you call it, the the trickle down or the you know the, the 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 down of lack of sales and just you know I'm just sitting there thinking what do I do what should I do should I make a decision? I can't make that decision because it's always been such a huge passion of mine, Cajun yeah, Lores. Yeah. You know, my wife would ask me, do you want to do this? You know, do you see yourself doing this when you're old? And I would always say, oh yeah, you know, maybe I wouldn't be the one making them in the shop, but you know, I'll be managing the business, you know, you know, so it was, it was such a huge passion of mine that I couldn't see myself doing anything else. Yeah. And so that's why that decision was, would be very hard for me to make, but my prayer closet so to speak is literally uh me going in my backyard every morning like help my wife get out the door she goes to school drops off my little girl at daycare all that and then i'll go in the backyard and i'll hit golf balls into my net for like 30 minutes to an hour kind of just That's get the great. day started you know get yeah. get my mind fresh and all that but i'll go do that you know say my prayers and and uh, talk to God and, you know, all of that. And you just kind of, cent- you get centered. For yeah. The day. Get centered for the day. It's yeah. exactly, you know, some people work out, some people yep, do yep. things. That's what I do. And and when I do it, when I don't get to do that for a day, I feel off. So, but I, every morning when I started seeing these trends, I guess I felt like God was, was revealing certain things to me that my hard headedness would, uh, would would it not pay attention to or, or, or ignore yeah, it. Yeah. It's like I was like starting to slowly understand it. But every every uh, it had to be like a whole year. Every wow. single day, every single morning, I would I would just pray, say, "I look if this is the 
the end or the time to end or whatever. I need an opportunity, you know? So I, I would pray for an opportunity. I just, yeah, that's I don't know what, what the opportunity would be, what it would look like, how any of that would shake. But I said, just, you know, give me, give me a door to walk through. So the way things kind of came about was a, a, a lady I knew, Miss Tiffany Landry, she does photography. And I had a little, and I did always have a little bit of background doing the Oh, yeah, you did videos pictures for and videos, Lord, yeah. and the un- unbelievable videos it, and stuff. It always, you know, I had that, I guess, the content or how to do it. Yep. I mean, I taught myself how to do it to make my own content for yep. Cajun Lords, Correct. for marketing, because I couldn't afford to pay anybody to do it. <laughs> you were the marketing guy. Right. <laughs> so um, she, you know, she she had put something on Facebook one day about uh, sports photography, looking for somebody to kind of take sports photography side of her, her, her business. I did reach out to her about it, but then I was kind of, I was also hesitant. I was like, well, you know, I was like, I know how to take pictures a little bit and whatever. Like I said, the, the time that would be dedicated to, you know, away from Cajun lures. And I was like, I didn't, I didn't know where I was, if I was ready for that or what that would look like. So I was always hesitant, you know, Mm -hmm. to get into anything else. And so I did message her about it and I kind of left it at that, but you know, I didn't pursue it. I didn't, I, I was just kind of like, it was just something. And I forgot about it, to be honest. I just, after I had message, I forgot about it. When people mentioned like, oh, God's calling you. Well, I was literally eating dinner with my wife and my in-laws and all that. And Miss Tiffany calls me on the phone. Hey, I have two gigs for you. Do you want them? Oh my goodness. So <laughs> didn't even have time to think about anything or whatever. And I'm just like, yeah. uh, okay sure thankfully for her she you know we got together she kind of showed me like a little bit of the the lighting and flash with photography and she she's the one that really helped me get started like helped me borrow her equipment we also worked out a little deal to work together and all these things you know and truthfully like she was calling me but you know i was looking at that whole situation like you know it's it's providence from from god saying like about it you going that way, you know? Yeah. yeah. So anyway, just that's kind of how it happened. And, you know. So t- tell me about Lanyap Productions. Is it strictly uh, sports photography, sports video, it's, action type stuff? It's kind of a, well, that's kind of why I call it Lanyap Productions. I had always done it, but it was more like individual little projects on the side. And I had always thought about trying to uh, pursue it more because uh, it's just like I enjoy doing it. Mm-hmm. And I would do a lot of wedding videos too. And my cousin would help me film. And uh, he got into videography too, which he also graduated in industrial design as well. It was always something I, in the back of my mind, I'd be like, oh, you know, I can, I'd love to grow a media company. And so I do a lot of sports photography right now, thanks to Tiffany kind of getting me in there. But what that also opened up was like more doors into photography and videography. But I, you know, it, it's really, I call it media because it's it's lanyap it's it's extra and that, and that's what i want to do for people whether it is pictures or videos and stuff you know like I, i'm a big service to somebody has the idea that they want to create something for their business or personal life or what have you and i'm the one that creates it figures out how to to make whatever it is for them so that's the way i look at it and it I, the sports photography has been pretty fun because you know, I'm, I learned how to try to do more unique looking images for sports. Mm -hmm. Like when me and my cousin, uh, we laughed because we graduated, um, I don't know, six to eight years apart, almost 10 maybe, uh, from school and our football pictures on my grandpa's fireplace Uh are the exact same yeah, same pose, pose and everything, ball, you know, uh, hand on the helmet. Right. And, you know, you think in general, like, OK, a few years go by, you think pictures would have evolved or something. But uh, no. And so I, we I, that was always something I kept in the back of my mind. Like, I want kids to see pictures and like empower themselves. Yeah, that's great. You know, if I see myself in a boring old picture, I'm like, yeah, it's my football picture. But if somebody takes a picture that makes me look like a collegiate athlete, yeah, I'm going to yeah. feel like a collegiate athlete, you know? That's great. I and love so that. that's, I think that's kind of what it really is. Like me, that's my service. That's what I'm providing for people. Yeah, it's yeah. photography, videography, but I'm, I'm trying to show you in the light that you should see yourself, you know? That's great. The things you've learned through your experience with Cajun Lures, 
What translated over to Line Yap Productions? A- anything that you noticed? Oh, yeah, a lot. I mean, I was always kind of, you know, selling fishing lures aside from the, you know, the manufacturing side and all that, but it really is a marketing heavy yeah. base company or industry, whatever. I was always trying to be on top of creating new cool looking videos, pictures, images for social media, my website, anything, you name it, just trying to create something, you know, that looked unique and, and, um, and using all the different software and, and learning new ways to create those, those things. And that really applied a lot to what I'm doing now. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and, but overall, not just that, but just the process of creating something, you know, and I think that's what I've learned that I really enjoy now is being a creator and not just like a content creator, nothing like that, like creating something. You come to me with a problem in some kind of way and I want, I'm somebody that helps you solve it through the different skills and things that I know, you know, and that's what I enjoy. Yeah. And I love that. I've always said any business USA, it's about, solving a problem that somebody will pay you for right yeah and and you did that your problem with cajun lures and you're still doing cajun lures it's recreation time it's peace it's Mm -hmm. you know what i mean Mm -hmm. um and with this it's memories and documenting that they're where they were at the time yeah taking these i I love that man so who has been like your biggest inspiration in life probably my wife yeah well one she has to deal with me (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> while yeah. I do all yeah, of God this. God bless her. Yeah. 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 So, um, you know, it, I guess I look at it too, like the sacrifices on her end and, and everything, you know, to allow me to even, even have a chance yeah. at yeah. trying to pursue any of this, you know? That's right. Truly, if it wasn't for her, I probably couldn't, you know? Yeah. Um, and not only that, but even help, help and support from families and friends, you know, you, you, you need that as an entrepreneur, hundred percent. Hi, so that's when I had a lesson, right? That comes out. That is big. I mean, if you don't have support from your loved ones, your family, your friends, it's really hard to make it on your own. You may hire some people and <laughs> let you hire some friends, but but it's different. They they work for you, and and so. Your family and friends, we all owe a lot to those people. Mm-hmm. I love that you, you called that out. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's kind of hard to pinpoint one person in general because I have right. so many that have helped along the way. And and they, and they know who they are, you know, like, yeah. and I always remember them, you know. Yeah. And they may have helped with Cajun lures. And if I end up not doing it 10 years down the road, but, you know, I'll still always feel like I'm in debt to them, you know, sure, in some kind it, of way. It, it got you where you are. To, yeah. Then, and 10 years from now, it, it will have had an effect on where you are at that point. Yeah. And so you just got to go back and, and appreciate that and, and figure out where you are. You know, for all these people that are thinking about either letting, letting the business kind of your passion project go down and moving to something else, what would you tell those folks? What kind of advice would you give them if they're trying to decide the same same thing you did don't feel like you failed i think maybe that was probably the biggest i guess struggle of you know trying to because i I was very passionate what i was doing and i just in my head always had the bigger picture and i always was confident in what it could be you know and i still feel that way i do too actually it could be something huge. yeah absolutely it's just i think like i said i'll I'm my own worst a minute. So I think I just, in a way, the way things fail, my resources kind of ran out. I've, I've, I've kind of rolled the ball as far as I could push it on my own, so yep, to speak. Yep, yep. But anyway, I've always had that big picture. So, uh, of what it could be and the confidence of what it can be and everything. So it was always, I guess if, if I were to just go do something else, it felt like I was giving up on it, maybe quitting. And, and 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 feeling like I I failed because I didn't reach what I was hoping to reach out of it. But yeah. in the same breath, when I take a step back and and look at the big picture of what has transpired to now, I didn't fail. Things I 
learned from this one business are translating into a new business. Yeah. Not only just from a skill standpoint, but business standpoint, logistics, management, mindset, you know, things we learned in our business class together. I'm, I still apply that to what I'm doing, you know, now with Lanya Productions. All of that still applies, you know. And there's some irony, you know, like, like God provided me with a with the opportunity to do this. And even in other ways, he's still providing. Like my shop that I built, I didn't, I didn't fail. I was able to build, finally build my own shop, get out of my, my dad's space. And also my little tea tiny shop that I was in for a long time, I was able to build my own metallic building behind the house. I've got my own shop now. So that's yep. a success yep. through my business. I even, you know, doing trade shows, I bought a cargo trailer. Well, now I need that cargo trailer to haul all my equipment around when I go do gigs and stuff. Yeah. I need my shop to turn it into a picture studio and stuff here and there, or just host things. Sometimes we host our Bible studies in there, you know? So it's like in a weird way, none of that was failure. Like I had, I have successes within what I would perceive or some might perceive be a failure because you never reached the pinnacle or a certain level you, you wanted to, yeah. you know? And, and I still think, in in one big way but many way god still is providing yeah no doubt you know about yeah. and so that helps me it gives me peace thinking about that that i i didn't fail you know yeah. it's not a fail yeah. and so that kind of helps that decision to transition into something else easier you yeah. know correct. It, correct. just trying to kind of get over that fear of failure i guess yeah as you meet people, especially these these kids and your picture, get your pictures and, and all that, how do you try to leave them different and better than before they met you? It's very, it's to me, it's kind of fun, you know. And not, this day is an age, and I and I've always seen this. You know, my wife's a teacher, so she tells me a lot of the stories, even with elementary age kids, because she teaches at the, teaches at the elementary school. So you know, these the kids these days are like going through a lot and like just mental health and depression and is very real. Yeah. Like I had a pretty, you know, I had a very easy childhood growing up, you know, I always had what I needed, you know, with my parents and stuff. But what I see today with like kids, you know, of just, and I guess you could say that with like maybe their, the access to social media, what have you, it's just, they're exposed to a lot more things faster. And so it's just stuff that I went through and, 18 they're going through at 10 years old yeah okay yeah. so that that hits them harder and so you know they don't feel confident in themselves basically you know and doing something like taking pictures of them and making them look cool whether it's sports or just beauty portraits or what have you showing them a different side to themselves like really builds that confidence up you know yeah. and and they they see themselves in a different light, so to speak, than they than they thought of themselves. You know, I, I can see that in them when, whenever we're doing pictures, uh, especially with the sports and the kids. You know, like I'll take a picture because they they see like what it looks like. You know, in around them the, the set or yeah, the setting, yeah and i'll blow the smoke in and you know because i'm using my head of like I know how this picture is gonna look. You know, and I know they can't see that vision, but I know. So blow the smoke in, take the picture, and then when they see it, and I show them in the camera right away, they're like, wow. <laughs> blown away. Like they're, you know, they're, and I think, you know, they're blown away because they, and they, they really, like they'll verbally say it, I look so cool, you know? <laughs> and I, and I'm, I'm thinking to myself, you look cool before we took the picture, you know, but it's just, it's a, it's a nice confidence booster. Just, just seeing that happen alone is like, I feel like that's my purpose, you know? Oh, man, I love it. I love so, it. So I, I just love seeing their reaction, e any of them, you know? I, yeah. Well, as of yesterday, I went take a versus, like, versus young kids, okay, or high school age athletes. I took pictures from my sister's sorority, okay? I was a little nervous because these, are, these uh -huh. are girls, you know, college age girls that they want to look good, you know, and I get it, you know? Um, so I was kind of, you know, I did a lot this more of the support stuff for a while, so I had to kind of take a step back, kind of retune my my thought of how I want the pictures to look and what they want, you know. Um, 
But sure enough, we took the pictures, That's got great. everything right. And the girls, I'd show them and they were like, oh, it looks so good. Like they enjoyed it. So I was like, yeah, yeah. if I can get, I think if I can get college age girls to love their pictures yeah. and not be picky and they love them, then I you, think I'm doing fig- a good job. figured a few things out. <laughs> so, uh, but still, you know, yeah. even with older, just, it's really just, you know, capturing people, capturing people, whether it's pictures or videos, you know, helping them out and helping them see something that maybe they didn't see that's where i like that's where i feel my purpose and where i fit in there thank you for listening to i finally get it to learn more about what zachary's up to visit the show notes and don't forget to like and subscribe so you never miss an episode if you're a business owner and you have a light bulb moment that might help other business owners please reach out to me at jeff at i finally get it.com 